Welcome to the Hollywood Outsider, an award-winning weekly entertainment podcast. On this episode, we are going to recap the Emmy winners of the 2021 Emmy Awards and our thoughts on this year's telecast. So it's the best in TV, or so they say, and that's what we're going to discuss. So let's get on with the show. My name is Aaron Peterson. Joining me today is my fellow Amanda Sink. Hello, hello, Aaron. Hey, Emmys are over. Yeah. They're done. Basically, they watched uh, The Crown and The Crown. And Ted Lasso. Well, I, a little a little Ted Lasso. <laughs> I mean, it is kind of like, okay, you threw some genre TV in here. What, just to get people to watch your show because you didn't give any awards to any of them? Except for one. There was one show that got an award. Which? It was the the one from Michaela Cole. Yeah, for I May Destroy You? Yeah. Sure, but I just I just feel like there's a lot of genre TV in here that once again goes unrewarded. WandaVision, great show. Yep. You've yep. you've got a lot of other shows that are just quality entertainment. Mandalorian and, probably should have won for something. Something. I mean, there are the creative arts Emmys, so you can go look those up if you want those. We're only gonna focus on the main telecast winners, mostly because there are so many awards in the creative arts it would take us another hour to do that show. And you won't know most of those people. So there you go. Sorry. We're going to be that people. Those people? Th- that people? Those people will be people. Those people. Mm-hmm. That's how English works. I'm not good at it, and I don't like it. <laughs> I'm not like it. Like, <laughs> Obviously. Okay. So first up, thoughts on this year's telegas. I mean, last year it was a Zoom event, which was interesting to say the least. In fact, um, Schitt's Creek actually got to reunite here and they because they weren't able to actually be on stage and win last year where they would have had their clean sweep, which is the only time it's ever been done, and they missed it. But they got to reunite here. So we got a live event. What did you think of the event overall? It was fun. I liked uh, Cedric as the the host of the show. It was nice to see people hugging and everything again, you know, for any – who are concerned about COVID and all of that, they were vaccinated. So it's not like they were just being the elite and able to do stuff that we're not able to do. They were just all vaccinated. That's why you didn't see some people there and also because of travel restrictions. So we did see some winners. All of the crown were apparently at a big party in London. They were just like, yeah, let's do this thing. (laughs) And so whenever they won an award, you know, like every time they were nominated, it would pan out to London kind of like they did last year. A little bit. Yeah. That part was nice, at least where the people who weren't able to be there still had an opportunity to participate. They kind of did a hybrid model. And I liked that. So that way they weren't totally excluding people. But. It, it was it was nice. It was nice. I liked how Seth Rogen was basically the guy on the internet that's always got to be like, what do you mean you went outside? You know, or went to a party. Why you got, what do you mean you traveled? You know, it's basically he shows up at the Emmys mm-hmm. and scolds them for not having the outdoor event like he thought they were going to do or whatever the impression was. He basically calls them out for being hypocrites. Yeah. 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 I liked that. That was nice. And especially if they did actually tell them that they were going to be outside. <laughs> I don't know if that was just a joke, but he's like, why are we in a sealed tent? I don't understand. It was it was pretty cool. Go watch it. I mean, Seth Rogen really called them out at the very beginning of the show for being pretentious. Yep. 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 And his beard wasn't there. And I don't know if I like that. Nobody likes that. Uh-uh. Nobody. He looks 20 years younger. He's like one of those shaved dogs or cats that you just cringe <laughs> wow. when you look at. Like, ooh. Wow. You're so cute when you have your fur, mm. but oof. Mm, cute, I feel, is like a stretch. But his annoying laugh is still there. So, you know, it's Seth I Rogen. I like his laugh. Oh, I think he's adorable. Seriously? Yeah. I like Seth Rogen. That laugh is not great. <laughs> it makes me laugh. It's an infectious laugh. I don't mind it. It sounds like it's an infection. It doesn't sound infectious. <laughs> Don't be rude. Uh, it's too late. <laughs> uh, okay. So Cedric the Entertainer, I did like we opened up with a rap song. You got LL Cool J busting out. I haven't seen him rap in a long time. Rita Wilson. Little Dicky. Yeah, Little Dicky. <laughs> Great. Rita Wilson was dr- was <laughs> dropping rhymes and really good at it, actually. Ish. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> And I also really liked the governor's award that they did for Debbie Allen and seeing her cry and all of the tribute that they paid to her and everything she's done for people in general who are trying to get into the arts 
in -hmm. many ways. But as a woman, you know, there is a great speech there, too. So I really liked that moment. Oh, and the presenters, the Canes were were a nice touch. When they all presented it to her and they're all like out there. Except Michael Douglas looked like he just needed a cane. It wasn't really like a dance (laughs) nod, but it worked out great. And his wife still looks fantastic. Well, when you have lots of money. I mean, it's possible. I am not. I don't know. But Catherine Zeta-Jones still looks good. <laughs> <laughs> He's thumbs upping. I don't, I mean, this is like really awkward to look at. Money paid for that, then money well spent. That's all I'm saying. I mean. <laughs> yeah, beautiful. Okay, so highlights before we get to the, the winners and no snubs. I don't believe in the word snub, just people that didn't win. So what do you, what were your highlights of the Emmys this year? Obviously, Schitt's Creek is probably my favorite part. That was hilarious, and it was a fun little skit. And, you know, Eugene Levy just has a hilarious presence. Anytime that he's there, I just feel like it's awkward and uncomfortable, but yet hilarious. And that's what they were trying to get across. So I really enjoyed that. Yeah, I I was a big fan of Schitt's Creek getting back together. And it was weird seeing Dan Levy and Catherine O'Hara and Annie Murphy and Eugene Levy. And they're all there and they're putting together a skit, basically, like you said, which I thought was just fabulous because Levy wrote it to the end. I mean, the whole the whole joke was I made some it was very much a Shits Creek style issue where, mm-hmm. you know, he went a little bit too far and the kids and the mom are just going to continue to move on with their, <laughs> with their day. We're not going to wait for dad to catch up. You screwed this up. Figure it out. And then he continuously just feels like slighted as the skit goes on. And it worked perfect. It was well executed. And it was nice to see them all play that out. That was a great moment. Conan was another highlight, just his <laughs> himself in general. But also he's kind of like heckling in the middle of the of a really impactful speech from the president, not the president of the United States, the president of the television academy but that was interesting <laughs> because i mean i feel like he was heckling it and everybody loved it and then once they realized well this is segueing into a very serious thing yeah you just yeah. like oh yeah. my bad like conan come on <laughs> read the room which is something scott frank sure didn't do oh god how many music three musical cues to get off the stage three he was a dick yeah, that was kind of dickish. I'm not going to lie. I, I mean, mean, like, I got to respect that he actually did get someone to stop the music because they never stopped the music. They didn't stop but it. But the way he handled it was, well, they stopped for a minute. They stopped for a little bit and then they played it again. Like, he got them to stop for a second, but he was so rude about it. And it's just like, I get this is a really big moment for you. And three minutes, but three minutes of a speech is just too much. You know, like you should have come into this with the expectation that you're going to get the same rules applied to you as everybody else. You're not special. Oh, man, that so. was such a I don't I don't like to throw the word around, but that was such a privilege moment. You know, it's just like, <laughs> yeah, you, you think everybody else that spoke all night long didn't want to take longer than they had. None of them were rude about it. They just said, oh, OK, it's my time because they realized that, you know, there's other awards. You're not the only person that wins tonight. And that was, I just thought it was rude. Like after the second playoff music, I'm like, mm, we're officially in dickish territory. I think when he told them to stop the music and the tone he had to it, where he's like, seriously, stop the music. Yeah. I'm like, it was funny at first where he's like, hold on, hold on. You know, like, let me finish my thing. Stop doing this. Uh, you know, I'll give you that pass at first because everybody is like, wait, wait, wait. But he just kind of like demanded it and felt like it, it came across as if he was owed mm-hmm. the three full minutes of speech time, which is just ridiculous. Yeah. And you weren't, you weren't. Apparently you owe somebody $5 million though. That's what I hear. What? Anyway, let's move (laughs) to my- That's some lawsuit gossip. Oh, snap. Google it. I ain't going into it here, (laughs) but apparently they should have checked their historical facts. I'm just saying. (laughs) Maybe you should drop that Emmy off at what? Nina's house. So the non-Emmy winner round table, that's one of my highlights. I freaking love that. I That was one of those skits from like, oh, this is... Because Cedric the Entertainer had a couple skits where he was basically mocking Tom Brady videos and stuff. Like that stuff sucked. <laughs> I didn't like that at all. It was ridiculous. But the but the non-Emmy winner where you've got Allison Hannigan in there, you got Jason Alexander, you got Scott Bakula, 
Uh, mm-hmm. Zoe De Chanel. Um, who am I missing? Fred Savage is in there. I mean, it was just basically these people talking about how they don't have Emmys and how they want to win and da da da. And it's just it was a a great discussion and joke because I always do wonder about the people that never win or never get nominated. You know how their conversations go and they're basically playing to that. I thought that was really, really funny. Well, and I, I can't remember which individual said it, but somebody was like, You don't know how bad it sucks. Like Allison, you should be happy that you've never won because I've been nominated so many times oh, Jason and Alexander. I haven't won. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, Costanza, <laughs> like, Costanza, everybody loves him. Everybody loves him. Never won. It was <laughs> so bitter. And it's just like, man, that would really suck to like year after year. You're like, oh, yeah, another nomination, another loss. <laughs> Woo. <laughs> uh, my other highlight, Gene Smart winning and, and you know, paying respects to her husband who passed away and just obviously fighting back the the emotion of that because you could tell that was starting to get to her, but she wanted to get it out. And then she gave her speech, very eloquent speech. And when the music played, she very respectfully, you know, finished up. Yeah. Like everybody except for Scott Frank. <laughs> I was also a fan of Michaela Cole's speech because I could see the moment. I, I couldn't tell if she was like putting her shoes on or if Cynthia Revo had to like kind of hype her up to get on stage, but there was like that moment where I think she was finishing writing what she was writing. That's what I think oh, she was okay. doing. She was right, and I'll read it to you when we get to her winning. I'll I'll, I'll actually uh, recite her speech not as well, but I'll recite it. But it was um I think she was finishing writing it down. Yeah, that was really cool to see them the her face when they announced her name and be, to I don't know just the impact of somebody who is an indie filmmaker who's competing with, I don't know, the crown, apparently, and ends up coming out as an outstanding writer. And the impact of her speech really just brought a tear to my eye. I really enjoyed it. So um, it connected. It really resonated. And I can't wait to watch this show now. I've heard amazing things about it. And I'm much more enticed to see this than the crown. I feel like I'm throwing a lot of shade at that show, but I got so sick of it last night. (laughs) (laughs) I got so sick of it, even though I didn't watch it. A second of it. It's yeah, just it was just like, awards. okay, I get it. The whole show is a masterpiece. I get it. Can we move I, on? Can I think somebody I, else win? I think I would get it less if in so many different categories, they didn't have five or six people from the same show nominated. That to me is where, that's where you lose. Like if you have six different nominees from six different shows, okay. And and that just happens that that show sweeps. I get it. I think I'm on board. You know, I mean, that just, they were the best. That show, like, really excelled at Schitt's Creek last year. I mean, it really was a fantastic show last year. I'm not knocking the crown. I'm really not. But you go look at Ted Lasso nom- nominations, and you go look at the Crown's nominations, Handmaid's Tale's another one. And in each of the categories, there's, like, three or four different people from the same show <laughs> nominated. And it's just like, did you only watch four shows? Did you really <laughs> just watch four shows? Because it really feels like we probably watched four shows. Oh, and here's a... Here's a token award. Here's a token award because we didn't really pay attention in those categories. Like that's what it felt like for most of the night. It just felt like there is so much quality television out there. Not just there's so much TV. There's so much quality TV out there that we can't even keep up with all of it. And apparently the Emmy voters is like, man, I only got time for like four. Yeah. Yep. It happened in a, in a lot of categories where there were numerous of the same series nominated for obviously like a different actor or actress or a different episode. But it was like, (laughs) there was one moment when it was Ted Lasso and I can't remember which category it was. It might've been the supporting actor because it was like, blah, 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 like Brett, Brett Goldstein, Ted Lasso. And then the next one was Brendan Hunt, Ted Lasso, Nick Mohammed, Ted Lasso, Mm -hmm. Jeremy Swift, Ted Lasso. And I'm like, okay, so why didn't we just say we nominate the entire, the on ensemble of the cast the support exactly <laughs> it just got ridiculous it's saturday night live ted lasso mayor of east town the crown hacks a little bit i mean that was really where all the awards went but let's get into it we should probably get into that you want to get into it who won yeah i mean i feel like that's the entire purpose of this episode so we should probably do that. <laughs> exactly. Now, we're not going through all the nominees because some categories have like seven or eight, and I'm just not going through all that. Plus, bad at names, pronunciations, suck at them, always offend somebody. Real bad. Not doing it. Can't do it. 
So here we go. Outstanding supporting actress in a comedy series. The winner was Hannah Wadding Waddingham from Ted Lasso. Rebecca from Ted Lasso. Woo! I loved her speech too. So fantastic. Just a lovely, lovely person she seems to be. Yeah. And thanked Jason Sudeikis for changing her life, which was really sweet. Yeah, she was like just cheering and enthusiastic for all of her team members too, who ended up she winning. Was. Spoiler alert. <laughs> well, Juno Temple, she shouted out to her because they were in the same category and she yeah. got the Emmy and, and Juno Temple didn't. And she still gave her a shout out and was very loving. It just, and Juno Temple seemed very supportive. It just seemed like they're a close bunch. They seem like family for sure. Yeah. Insert Vin Diesel here. All right. <laughs> Outstanding supporting actor in a comedy series because he supports. That would be uh, Brett Goldstein from Ted Lasso. You listen to Troy. <laughs> yeah, supporting actor. I also really enjoyed his moment where he came up there and he's like, so I was told many times not to swear. And then the next thing you hear is just beep. <laughs> like he's just bleeped out for the whole thing because he's just swearing a bunch of curse words and i was like god i love you this is why we all adore you because he's hilarious they asked him afterward you know about his what he said up there and stuff and he said he didn't remember it because it's all a haze which i could get i've i've been in the not that a big of an award but i've won an award before and trust me you you forget a lot of it and i so i get where he's coming from but he's like but i'm guessing probably swearing yeah and <laughs> that was funny. But congratulations to him. That's that's awesome. He deserved and it. He'll definitely probably win next year, too, for Best Supporting Actor. As a actor. supporting actor. Yeah. Because yeah. he supports Ted Lasso. <laughs> this is a bit uh, that came from the episode from last week, by the way, for anybody who's just listening to this, where one of our co-hosts thinks that Brett Goldstein is a lead actor, and he's wrong. And so we're... We're ragging on him, even though he's not here to defend himself. I wasn't going to explain it, but nice of you to do it. It was two weeks ago. <laughs> oh, two weeks ago. Whatever. Mm -hmm. That's okay. He's still in denial. All right. So the outstanding supporting <laughs> actress in a limited series or movie is Julianne Nicholson for Mayor of Easttown. That was a pretty heartbreaking role. I I haven't seen that show because <gasps> I, I watch more than four, but this was not one of those that I watched. I was sad Catherine Hahn didn't win because I thought she was incredible, though. Mm, I, I think if you saw this show, I understand this award. Like she was, mm. it was a really traumatic role. But Catherine Hahn was great, but it's a different kind of great. Gotcha. Yeah. And you know they they always love a little drama more than they like a little comedy. That's why they got to break them into different aspects, or otherwise nobody'd ever win that was in a comedy. <laughs> <sighs> All right, outstanding supporting actor in a limited series or movie. Evan Peters in Mayor of Easttown. Huh? That's a, that's a surprise because he's up against the entire cast of Hamilton <laughs> and then uh, some green, uh, some Queen's Gambit and I May Destroy You. So, I mean, he kind of was the was the rare surprise of the night, but they gave a great performance in Mayor of Easttown. And because you haven't seen it, Amanda, I can't tell you one awesome thing about that character because it's a huge mm paradigm shift i've heard he was fantastic though like this was very well deserved i mean he was very good i i don't i mean he was he was great in it fantastic eh, but he was very good very good certainly deserving all right outstanding writing for a drama series the winner is white people the tv show the crown <laughs> peter morgan the episode was war congratulations i i've seen the crown some of it it's not for me. I also am somebody who can't stand the monarchy. I just, mm -hmm. I've never understood the concept of worshiping people who are just born into success. Like they didn't have to work for anything in their entire lives and they have no problem not doing anything for the people that have. So it's just, it's a personal thing. That said, I'm right there with you. Seemed like a fine enough TV show. Apparently it's the best one going. I didn't know that. <laughs> for like the past three years or something because they've won emmys year after year sure because people like royalty apparently i mean you're not rewarding the queen man it's just a tv show so you don't have to give them all the awards but they tried because they also won outstanding directing for a drama series <laughs> jessica hobbs for the same episode war war must have been a great one go check that episode out and then go watch some downton abbey 
You can get it all in at once. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding supporting actress in a drama series. Uh, hold on to your butts. Gillian Anderson won for the crown. But we love her, so she's, I'm on board with this. She is fantastic in pretty much everything she does. So that's And she's had such great. a range in the past year. And to illustrate my point, just in this category, Outstanding Supporting Actress in a Drama, there were one, two, three actresses from The Crown, and then one, two, three, four actresses from The Handmaid's Tale, and then one from Lovecraft, Lovecraft Country. So... Yeah. 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 I think I, that kind of says what my point was. You got eight mm-hmm. nominees, three shows. Stop it. That's just ridiculous. Okay. Outstanding supporting actor in a drama series. <sighs> Tobias Menzies from The Crown. Who's surprised? <laughs> we should, I mean, at this point, I was like, not surprised. We should add an applause track at some right? point. I mean, yeah, I just... Man. Okay. I was saying writing for a variety. I feel like we're, uh, there's going to be people that love the crown and they're just like, you guys are sons of bitches. You know, I tried to watch it. It's not for me. Make a show about, it's not about a monarchy. I'll try it. Boom. It doesn't detract from the, from the talent in this show. It's just. Sure. We I, also recognize uh, for all of these shows that are nominated that the categories should have a little bit more variety in them. Yeah. Which is funny for a show that rewards variety. They don't have any. Yeah. Something to think about. <laughs> Just something to ponder. Maybe if they make a show about a guy's tooth that goes rogue called The Crown, I would watch that. That sounds super bizarre. It, I feel like it'd have to be an animation and somehow series. Somehow it's more interesting than what this is. So <laughs> outstanding writing for a variety series. Last week tonight with John Oliver. Uh, oh. th- that doesn't surprise me in any way, shape, or form. And he also won for outstanding variety talk series. So... John Oliver is still very popular. I think he wins like every year. I like his show. I like his, I think he's humorous. It's definitely changed over the past few years, but I still enjoy you his think? humor. Yeah. I mean, it used to be he would approach some things a little more even keel. Yeah. Now everything is very progressive. Everything. Mm-hmm. Very progressive. The only sad part about the Outstanding Variety Talk series is Conan ended his show and he didn't win. And I've always yeah. thought Conan is a fantastic host. Always has been. Just wanted to mention that. And also a great heckler, turns out. I was saying variety sketch series, Saturday Night Live. With only two nominees, you had a pretty good chance of winning. <laughs> there were there were more, I think, but No, there were two. Okay, well, uh, still, I mean, it's I, I watch Saturday Night Live like every week, but it's not because it's great it's because i keep hoping we're gonna get a couple skits that are great and there are Mm. a few pop here and there but yeah that's what i have youtube for (laughs) to watch the ones that are really good basically sketches are all tiktoks now right uh Mm -hmm. outstanding writing for a comedy series hacks was a was a big surprise uh lucia anelio um paul downs jen statsky the episode was there is no line And that actually was a pleasant surprise because it did beat Ted Lasso. Yeah, I was incredibly surprised that it beat out two Ted Lassos, no less. Good stuff. And Hacks, by the way, it's it's actually a pretty solid show. Not bad. Gene Smart's fantastic in it. Like, wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. I mean, it won a few awards, so I would hope it's a good show. Absolutely. Uh, Outstanding directing for a comedy series, Hacks, Lucia, and Yellow, There Is No Line, so that's the same episode that they won for writing. So congratulations there. And then we jump right into Outstanding Lead Actress in a Comedy Series, which was Gene Smart for Hacks. And this category actually had a few different nominees, which was nice to see that the Academy at least pretended to watch other shows. Uh, one thing I'll add is Kaylee Kuko was nominated for The Flight Attendant for Best Astri- Actress, and she didn't win. But she was like right there at the stage. I don't know if you saw this or not, but she was right there at the stage. And every single time somebody won, even in her own category, she was cheering them on. She was like, Mm -hmm. great, love you. Like she was super, she was like the fan we all wish we were most of the time. Catherine Hahn did something similar to that. She would like cheer and then she would hug every single one of the winners as they walked down. (laughs) <laughs> like, yay, congratulations, big hug. And I was like, oh, that's really sweet. I love that. I love to see the love. 
Mm -hmm. You know, I love to see the love. Uh, the only thing I, t I noticed this, Anthony Anderson didn't stand while everybody else gave a standing ovation to Gene Smart. Yeah, that was weird. Now, I don't know if, I mean, his um, TV wife, Tracy Ellis Ross, was nominated. So maybe it was just the, eh, my, my, my lady didn't win or whatever. But I just, the whole room stood and it was just like noticeable. Maybe he's got a bad, a gimp leg. I don't know. All right. So outstanding lead actor in a comedy series, the extremely modest, it seems like, Jason Sudeikis for Ted Yay! Lasso. I screamed for him. I was so excited. But I, I, it was hard for me because I could see all of the other talent in this category. And I was really kind of rooting for William H. Macy for Shameless because he's just been an amazing character to watch progress through that show. And mm -hmm. it had its final conclusion in this past year. So, But it was well-deserved by Sudeikis. Oh, absolutely. I mean, fantastic. And good for him. You know, he's been... On a roll, he recently just got a pay bump. So as the star of Ted Lasso, he'll continue <laughs> to make a ton of money. And that joke well never runs dry. I, I feel like he's uh, the next Bateman, Jason Bateman. Like they're both characters that everybody liked and enjoyed in their comedy roles. And then they started to branch out into dramas and stuff with emotion or more depth to it and now they're like these standout actors where we're like whoa did not fully expect this to happen but i'm fully on board with it and it's they're both actors now that i want to follow everything they do absolutely and i'm i'm happy for the guy it seems like it means had a rough couple of years you know when he got divorced and stuff like that but he's always one of those actors where i will watch him do whatever he does whenever he pops up in a movie i want to see it because he's in it and I'm glad he finally found something where he's like, it's a huge hit and it's his baby. And he's always said three years. We'll see if that doesn't get stretched out. Cause I mean, all these awards, lots of money. I bet you, I bet you we get four or five years of Ted Lasso. Who knows? We'll see. We'll we find out see. in probably like a year or so. Pretty soon. Pretty soon. Outstanding competition program, RuPaul's Drag Race, which I think has won several times. So good for them. It has. I was, I was deep inside rooting for Nailed It. Nicole Byer has my heart. She's what is so Nailed hilarious. It? I don't know what that is. Nailed It is a competition baking show where they bring on random oh. people who are really, really terrible bakers, and they have to do these extravagant looking designs, and they turn out terrible, so they kind of make fun of them at the same time, and Nicole Byer just has this really infectious laugh that I can't get over, and there's one time where she like, somebody's was so bad, she laughed so hard, she like fell off the table oh, that's cool <laughs> she's amazing in it it's really funny I will, and they have guest judges each week i will maybe probably check out one episode are you a big fan of jason manzoukas uh yeah who's not oh. <laughs> what's up jerks <laughs> he's, he's in the first episode of the holiday special so if you want one with boom. him to get your feet wet there you go boom because i doubt i'll watch all of them but i would watch that i'm not a big reality guy me either, but it's like fun to have on in the background and just laugh and look at the things that these people are doing and just say, yikes. <laughs> <laughs> Outstanding directing for a limited or anthology series or movie. The winner, The Queen's Gambit. That was Scott Frank giving a 45-minute speech. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I get it, dude. We all love Anya Taylor-Joy. Anya. Sink. I didn't know it was pronounced Anya. What did I say, Anya? Anya, because that's the way the entire world has pronounced it for the past, like, decade plus. What a nice lady. She didn't correct everybody. No, she didn't. And she was so, she looked so humble watching him talk about her. You know, she was just, oh. And she seemed very okay that he was totally taking up everyone else's time. <laughs> to recognize her. <laughs> I had to sit for a second, like, are they together? Because it was just... There was what? like a, a few extra seconds of honoring her. And I was like, all right, man, we get it. Oh, it's probably one of those things where he's got a hu huge cross and she's like, oh, that's never going to happen. <laughs> this is but awkward. say nice things Thank about you. me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, outstanding writing for a limited or anthology series or movie, I May Destroy You, Michaela Cole. She is the one that gave the best speech. Now- this is about a sexual assault survivor. Like she's telling her own story the way I understand mm -hmm. it. And yeah. I'm really surprised you haven't seen this it's on HBO Max. 
It's at the top of my list now. Okay. It, it definitely seems like something that you would you would enjoy because you you are definitely somebody who likes to be supportive of situations where they're discussing tough topics like that. Mm-hmm. But her speech yeah. was, and and I just loved it. So you know, I would insert it, but then you got to worry about is the Emmy's going to sue us or something. So I'm just going to read you what it says. And possible music in the background, which uh, yeah. pulled real quick. That's the problem. Write the tale that scares you, that makes you feel uncertain, that isn't comfortable. I dare you. In a world that entices us to browse through the lives of others to help us better determine how we feel about ourselves and to in turn feel the need to be constantly visible. For visibility these days seems to somehow equate to success. Do not be afraid to disappear from it, from us for a while, and see what comes to you in the silence. I just loved it. I just It's a very deep and thoughtful speech and too often it's i want to thank my agent and the guy who mows my lawn so that was <laughs> pretty amazing yeah i like that she started it off by saying you know i wrote my speech think about all of the things that you would want to say if you had won one of the biggest awards that you could ever possibly win mm-hmm. and you take that time to just say i'm going to inspire other writers to yep. keep doing what they're doing and so i thought that was really impactful as a writer, it really spoke to me. I just thought it was is very eloquent, beautifully stated. It yeah. was just a, it was a very strong, powerful moment. It really was. It it definitely explains why she won the award for outstanding writing for sure. Absolutely, outstanding lead actor in a limited series or movie, Ewan McGregor for Halston, which is on Netflix, and I have not seen it, but at least there were some variations here in the categories. Paul Bettany did not win. Amanda, I'm sorry. That's okay. I root for Elizabeth Olsen anyway. <laughs> she didn't <laughs> he win. He was great, but Olsen, yeah, she didn't win either. She she didn't win. Outstanding lead actress in a drama series, Olivia Coleman, The Crown. <gasps> At least, I I mean, Olivia Coleman, she kind of just wins everything. You skipped over Outstanding Lead Actress in a Limited Series or Movie. Well, then let's go back there. Outstanding Lead Actress in a Limited Series or Movie, Kate Winslet, Mayor of Easttown, who is... I just want to say one of the greatest actors working today. And she's adorable. Oh, she seemed so humble. And everybody loves her. Everyone loves her. And yep. who, who was it? Uh, oh, Evan Peters. He shouted out, thank you, Kate Winslet, just for being Kate Winslet. Like that was a <laughs> great yeah. speech. She's obviously well-respected and well-loved. And what I find interesting about this is because she won in the category of limited series But she has recently started saying she might consider doing another season. So if they actually came back and did another season, does that mean she has to give her word back? I don't know how the the rules work. (laughs) Oh, that actually prompts a reminder in my brain about the little skit that they did for the award from last year where they came back and they're like, we need to check and make sure that this is real and that the votes still align. (laughs) Stephen Colbert's little knock. Yeah. Ah, ha, ha. Cost to California $267 million. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Outstanding lead actor in a drama series, Josh O'Connor from The Crown. Again, the most magnificent TV show that's been around since Game of Thrones, for sure. Apparently. In a category that had Billy Porter in Pose, who's great, and Jonathan Majors in Lovecraft Country, who was great in that. It's just like, there's... I'm not knocking him. I'm sure he's wonderful, but there are other shows, people. Whatevs. Yep. Jonathan Majors was fantastic. He really was. Outstanding Variety Special, Stephen Colbert's Election Night 2020, Democracy's Last Stand, Building Back America, Great Again, Better 2020. (laughs) (laughs) The most ridiculous name ever. So long. I I love this because this is the part where they... Oh, no, this was, that was for SNL. They thanked everybody for their individual things. And then they said, and for Kate McKinnon, who did everything else. Exactly. <laughs> that reminds me, sorry, I didn't even mention, when Jason Sudeikis won, he actually threw shade at Lorne Michaels, which <laughs> was pretty funny. He's like, oh, he must be out there taking a dump. And then he starts Yo, going, yeah, yeah. <laughs> going on a little, uh, a little Lorne Michaels riff, which was yeah. pretty funny. Pretty funny. It was. And when Colbert won, he took Conan up there with him. Or Conan went up on his own. I don't know which one happened, but... Both. Yes. <laughs> that was classic. Uh, outstanding Variety Special. This is probably the one that I was really surprised the most with. 
because among the nominees, well, let me just read them, okay? Because this one I'll actually read because I just want you to hear what you're going up against. Bo Burnham Inside, which everybody was talking about. David Burns, American Utopia. Age 46, very powerful Dave Chappelle special. Friends, The Reunion. A West Wing special to benefit when we all vote. But the winner was Hamilton. This is pre-recorded variety special. So what do you feel about that? Because, I mean, I realize people love Hamilton. On the same token, it was just a recording of the play. That's an interesting perspective because it is just a recording of the play. It's not anything that was produced for it. So I was Wait, incredibly... Start, that, start. Hang on. Start that over. You broke up. Oh, okay. Um, turn your video off. It says that it can help the connection. Because then I'm not trying to stream in incoming video. You know, that's an interesting perspective because Hamilton is pre-recorded. It was just recorded from the play. So it's not like they had to do a lot other than just produce and mix the audio and the video. Whereas Bo Burnham and Dave Chappelle and all of these others, they are preparing. Well, I guess Dave Chappelle doesn't. I don't know. It's interesting because they all pre-recorded and they prepare it, but not for the intention of putting a movie out there. Well, it's like... Or- I'm not knocking the pre-recorded nature of it. I mean, I get that. It would prepare it. But Hamilton's literally just the stage play. Like, there's nothing yeah. new from that. Yeah. And I'm not... Hamilton's fantastic. Not knocking it. But it feels like... Is that fair? I mean, you just had a camera on a play. That's not really new. I guess it's yeah, new that's to us. What, it's interesting because it is... Normally, when you have a play, it's only the people who see it. And then they do still have to ensure that the the movie looks like a movie that it's quality audio quality video that they cut it right things like that but in the same respect it's not the same as somebody putting together a comedy special that then goes on to netflix and bo burnham especially for me you know he did everything himself Mm-hmm. And so it's a one man who's putting together this show in his house. And it's so incredibly hard to, for comedians to make sure that their show is going well when it's live. But I can't even imagine how hard it would be to put together a show where there's literally nobody in the room but yourself and whatever lights and audio that you create. And so his special, I was incredibly impressed by. I still listen to the songs because they're really catchy, but... I wish he would have won, yet I understand why Hamilton was such a success because it was something that was new to us. Yeah, it did bring people together. Sure. And I don't know. We still sing those songs, too. Absolutely. I I just I feel like there's just something about but essentially this should just be a Tony Award because it's just the play. Like it's not a movie. It wasn't a recreation. It wasn't re orchestrated differently for this presentation it was just a, a movie version of the play it's all yeah it was. but yeah good hey, point not not knocking it at all i think hamilton's fantastic i love the music it's it's great <sighs> i don't want to miss my shot you know what i'm saying huh you know what I'm saying? <laughs> no? okay that was so forced all right outstanding comedy series ted lasso at this point i'm excited for him but i'm also like well damn it man now you're making me not like the fact that ted lasso's winning everything but it's well deserved so i'm good with it <laughs> This is where I actually feel like it's the most intriguing because they list so many TV shows that are outstanding. They're nominated as outstanding, but a lot of them don't have a nomination anywhere else <laughs> or just have one because right, there's Blackish, right. which had, uh, you know, a couple of them. Sure. Cobra Kai had zero other nominations. Yeah. Pen 15 had one nomination. Emily in Paris had no other nomination. Hacks won a couple of things and it was nominated in there. Then we obviously had Ted Lasso. The flight attendant had one or two nominations and the Kaminsky method. But I'm like, out of all of these shows... Very few of them were actually nominated in other categories. So how did you mm-hmm. get to them being outstanding, but yet you didn't nominate them? I don't know. I guess it goes back to our point of one show per category. Yeah, I, I think they, all right, we're going to pull the winners from this show and we'll pull the winners from this show. Mm-hmm. But guys, we need more nominees. Because uh, <laughs> we got three shows, guys. Billy, where's the TV guide? Uh, they don't make them anymore, Jim. <laughs> Stop making the ah oh, shit. Turn on the guide. 
Uh, there's nothing on networks anymore. Put on the streaming stuff. I don't know. Just pick some shows. All right. That's Google I think that's how it Netflix. Works. Can you Google Netflix? <laughs> right. Jim, Jim, Google uh, Netflix. I think it's great Cobra Kai was in here, but I also, also, <laughs> also do not think they took Cobra Kai seriously. No, not I'll at all. Okay. Outstanding drama series. Here's the nominees. Once again, to your point, The Boys, no other nominees. Bridgerton had a couple, that, which I thought would actually have a ton. The Mandalorian had a couple. Lovecraft Country, couple. Pose, couple. Handmaid's Tale, bunch. This is us, one or two. The Crown wins, as apparently it's mm. for Bo, for Dustin to do. <laughs> yeah, The Boys is another one where I'm like, how did they not get any other nominations? None. It's a genre show. Yeah, I know, but still. I really wanted Gina Carano nominated for like Best Supporting Actress for The Mandalorian. Just oh because. god, they wouldn't even do it on principle. Just um, just because I want to see how they would handle it. Anyway, so The Crown won. <laughs> Ooh, ah, shock and surprise! Surprise! <laughs> this is my face. My surprised face. All right, one more category, which actually was kind of surprising that they had it for the last one, but on the yeah. same token. I think this is probably the one that was least for sure. Even the Emmys didn't know. Like, we don't even know about this one. Mm-hmm. It's Outstanding Limited Series. The finalists were Mayor of Easttown, I May Destroy You, WandaVision, The Queen's Gambit, The Underground Railroad, which for whatever reason didn't have more nominations. And by all accounts, that's a fantastic show. So that's kind of a surprise. Yeah. Uh, I know Troy has spoken about it many times on our show. He just, he loved that series. But the winner, the Queen's Gambit, soon to be called Damn the Scott Queen's Frank. lawsuit. Yeah. Well, uh, the only thing I could think of is when they were determining this, it's called the Queen's Gambit, and they probably thought it was the crown, right? So that's why. I just because the word queen is in there. They're yeah. like royalty, royalty, royalty. Yep, it's pick, it, pick it, pick it, pick <laughs> it. <laughs> gotta be what it is. That <laughs> is the only thing that makes sense to me. Wait, <sighs> is that show about rich white people? Because I think we should pick it then. <laughs> That's the winner, for sure. Boy, were they wrong. <laughs> they were wrong. They didn't realize it's about an addict who ends up being a chess master. It's a great series, by the way. I'm not knocking the Fantastic. series. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm only knocking Scott Frank. I don't know him. He might be a he lovely guy. He deserves it. Okay. No, anyway. he, he's not a lovely guy. We all saw him on national television on CBS. <laughs> like, we know what's real. <laughs> I think it's probably the first time I've watched CBS in like three years, intentionally. <laughs> On purpose, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't a football game or some awards special. I, I normally just do not watch CBS, but whatever. That is, uh, that's it. That is the list. That, you know, there are the creative arts Emmys, which I definitely think you guys should go look up, but there's too many of them to keep going. We would end up being a two or three hour show. And we just wanted to recap the big ins. So overall, what do you think of the awards? I mean... Does it make you feel like they don't appreciate all the quality television out there, or am I just reading too much into it? No, I, f I feel like that's exactly how we feel about most of the award shows, even the Oscars. They're not always appreciating all of the art that's out there either. They've done a decent job trying to do a little bit better the last couple of years and got some nominations in there, but for the vast majority of these award shows, it's... It's it feels elitist in a lot of ways, and it's not really about what the mass majority population enjoy about television. It's we're looking for these specific things which lead to the same shows being nominated and being selected. So that's kind of unfortunate. But I liked that they switched it up. They had some I don't know. It wasn't pretentious <laughs> as much as I thought it would be. And. I agree with you. I think we really need to have them switch up the categories and put limits on how many actors from the same show can be nominated in the same category. Oh, dear God, Things yes. Things like that. <laughs> Just yes. I mean, give me a break. Six actors. For the, really, the whole cast? Did you, did you even watch anything else, Bob? Seriously. Anything? It was in your email, Bob. He's like, I clicked. <laughs> I thought there was just the one. I clicked the screener for that one. And they're like, there was 14 more that you didn't even open. I can see you haven't opened my email, Bob. 
You never even touch Hulu, Bob. Watch Handmaid. <laughs> and I can see Netflix because they use everything based on algorithms. You know, they're going to, because Ted Lasso won, The Crown won, and Queen's Gambit. So you're going to basically see a new series about a coach of the Queen's Soccer League or something like that's going to go up against. I, I, I'm in. Sure. <laughs> no, no, don't feed it. Don't do it. Uh, also, very important to mention, all three of the primary winners, the, the series winners, Ted Lasso, The Crown, Green's Gambit, all streamers, no networks, no, not even cable. There was very little network representation in the nominations in general. Exactly. Yeah. I wonder why, because nobody's watching them anymore. <laughs> it's or it's streaming. just like your grandparents who don't know how to change the channel. Aww. And so they watch the same show every day. I'd watch more yeah. of them if they were commercial free. I think I'm just addicted mm-hmm. to no commercials. Yeah, that's for sure what it is. I, I mean, when we had commercials in this, in just the this award show, I was like, Jesus, I am not prepared for this. <laughs> oh, exactly. I, I tried to watch the the new Dan Brown show on Peacock. Uh, Troy kept raving about it, and he's like, "It's really good." I'm like, "Okay." I started watching it three times. I've tried to watch it, and I fell asleep all three times because it hits a commercial, and I'm just like, mm-hmm. mm, "Nap." <laughs> yeah. Very poor time planning on my part, but it is what it is. All right, that's going to do it for our Emmy episode, Amanda. But I also want to ask you, we also saw a cop shop recently. We're not going to do a full review. Yes. That is Gerard Butler and Frank Grillo and Alexis Louder. And it's it's kind of like this mesh of Assault on Precinct 13 and a whole bunch of other stuff. It's directed by Joe Carnahan. And Frank Grillo for, gets himself thrown into prison and Gerard Butler's a hitman who also gets himself thrown into prison because he wants to kill Frank Grillo's character. And Alexis Louder is the cop trying to fend everything off. What did you, just quick thoughts, cop shop, because I know it didn't do very well. It's probably going to be gone from theater soon. But your thoughts? Oh, that's too bad because it was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. It was something I for sure enjoyed in the theaters with a bunch of popcorn it felt very 80s in a lot of ways to me. I know you said there was a lot of 70s vibes for you too, but um, Alexis Louder is really what stole the show for me. I felt like she carried the entire film. It's not to say that Frank Grillo and Gerard Butler aren't aren't great because they both are, but for someone that I'm not familiar with to come in and steal the show for me was just incredibly impressive. And so... Round of applause to her, and I can't wait to see her in some other things, for sure. Yeah, and Toby Huss shows up as another hitman, and he's <laughs> wild. <laughs> wild. Yeah, he's great. I just drew a dick. It got weird. It just got weird. <laughs> it's so funny. Uh, but yeah, Alexis Louder, she is fabulous. Like, as soon as the movie was over, and you're in a movie with Frank Grillo and Gerard Butler. The action's fun, mm-hmm. the thrills, and- the turn of expectations are fun. All they are fun to watch. I, I I love both of them as actors. But she steals the show. Like she's better than all of them. She is just fun to watch. Definitely. Yeah. And I will also add in that I did catch uh, a show that you recommended recently, very recently. That's on Hulu, which is the premise, and that's bonkers. Yeah. Yeah. I I totally, I don't think I've mentioned it on the podcast, but yeah, it's where they basically take a different social issue for every episode and make it a capsulized episode. So it's an anthology series. So each one's a standalone. And the one is um, basically (laughs) this woke guy and he could help save a a black guy from prison, but it means he has to enter a sex tape into evidence and everybody's going to scrutinize his love life. So how (laughs) woke is he? It's, it's really interesting yeah yeah no the other i one's was got really your boyfriend surprised. in it yeah john bernthal Ooh, but that one was uh had a great conclusion so i would highly recommend that show and then i also started watching the new charmed the reboot charmed which i was very anti because i love the original series and so i didn't even want to get my toes wet in this new reboot but it's it's interesting the direction they've taken it and it's not a complete like we're just going to copy and paste. We're going to try to switch it up a little bit and modernize it and they do some really fun things with it. So I I'm actually enjoying it surprisingly. So just to clarify, every time we're like, "Amanda, did you do this this or see this or whatever?" and you're like, "No, I didn't have time. It's because you were watching TV already." And knitting. I've been and knitting. knitting. Apparently. Yeah. 
You're officially a grandma. It's like my, the, it's an activity that's like wind down. Like I'm going to wind down and go to bed. So I'll put on this and knit and fall asleep sort of thing. <laughs> okay, granny. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I sound like the oldest woman ever. God. All right. Well, just be careful crossing the street. Make sure there's somebody <laughs> to help walk you. Jesus. No. All right. Share your thoughts on this episode or anything else in our Facebook group or we're on Twitter at Buy Popcorn. Our site is the HollywoodOutsider.com. You're getting this a little early this week just because it's an Emmy recap. We wanted to get it to you before, you know, middle of the week. You'll be over the Emmys by then. So we're trying to get it to you as fast as we can. You can rate and subscribe on your favorite podcast app. Be sure to come back next week. We're actually going to have a giveaway, I think, for Fast and Furious 9. Woo! In case you want to win a copy of that, maybe, you know, come back and you'll hear more about that. You can find John's artwork on Insta and Twitter at Arjun Draws, Amanda on Veronica's Marshmallows and Smirk and at Sink Into This, Troy Heinrichs at Troy Heinrichs on Twitter and The Blacklist Exposed, where I also do that podcast with him. I'm at Aaron Smirks and I'm also on Presenting Hitchcock. That's it. That's our show. Thanks for listening. And remember, the next time you head to a theater, buy popcorn. <laughs>